Welcome to our course. Today's topic is analytical framework. So, an analytic framework is just one of the names of what this thing is. It's also called a logic model, and what it does is it links the evidence and how it all fits together in the populations as it relates to outcomes. I'll show you an example, don't worry. But you'll also see terms like logic models, conceptual frameworks, influence diagrams, theoretical frameworks, those are all terms that are used to discuss analytic frameworks. So don't be confused if they're different words. They're really all for the same thing. So, why we use an analytical framework? It is done to clarify implicit assumptions. First, to identify logical flaws as key questions are developed. Next, to identify distinct bodies of evidence to be included in the review. Thirdly, to address multiple questions in a review. And analytic frameworks help define key questions, and thus direct specific literature searches. Finally, to outline a complex chain of logic between intermediate and clinical outcomes. Well, an analytic framework, as we've been talking about, specifies the population, the interventions or exposures to outcomes, and sometimes you'll see timing, settings and comparators put in. It clarifies these links between the intermediate outcomes and the health outcomes. Take example of hemoglobin A1c, as it would be measured for example in a study of people with diabetes or who are at risk of diabetes. That could be considered by some people an interim outcome or a surrogate outcome, and not the actual outcome that you're interested in, which might be death. It might be amputation, it might be neuropathy or diabetic retinopathy, for example. So it helps you to find when you have an analytic framework, what's an interim outcome along the way, and what is the actual final outcome that you're interested in in your study. These analytic frameworks use arrows and boxes, and squares, and circles that tell you how everything is joined together. And if you're interested in constructing these things, you can look at an article by Cindy Mulrow in Annals of Internal Medicine quite a while ago in 1997, where she explains how to do this. So here's a typical depiction of a research question. You'd have these boxes with the rounded edges and you might have a square box, each meaning different things. And these numbers represent the key questions that you're asking in your analytic framework or in your series of systematic reviews. And you might have interim outcomes or side outcomes, such as in two. So here is a sample framework and you might start with people who are at risk of a disease. Let's say, women over 60 might be at risk of breast cancer, just by being women and over 60. They are screened using mammography. That's a question. Is screening effective in preventing outcomes that we don't want, such as breast cancer mortality? And you can look at both the effectiveness of screening, that is early detection, which is really an interim outcome or even the adverse effects of screening. Were women upset by results that meant they had to come back for another test, for example? You can also see that with early detection and treatment, sometimes with breast cancer people are treated who really wouldn't need to be treated because nothing bad was ever going to happen to them. Unfortunately, we don't know ahead of time who needs to be treated and who doesn't. So that's a tough one to address in a real-life setting. But your early detection then can lead to adverse effects of treatment. So you could treat someone with early breast cancer various ways and that person could have adverse effects simply from, let's say, chemotherapy, nausea and vomiting, hair falling out, various effects. Some forms of treatment, Talking about bone marrow transplant for women with breast cancer could kill you, and actually even some of our forms of chemotherapy can kill you in rare situations, and even radiation could kill you over the long term if you follow people long enough. So you get an interim outcome, which might be detection of breast cancer, it might be the type of surgery a person has, it might be progression of disease. Those are all intermediate outcomes where the final outcome that you're interested in is mortality, or perhaps, something else depending on your disease. But by drawing it this way, you can see the different questions, the effectiveness of screening, the possible harm, the effectiveness of early detection, possible harm. You can look at intermediate outcomes, and you would have to define what they are. And you can look at the final outcomes that one might be interested in, reduced morbidity and mortality at a later date. So that would be a sample working format. Again, setting up your question this way, using an analytic framework can be important, just as asking your question in the proper way in those examples we showed to get proper data collection. You don't know what data you want to collect until you have your question properly formatted. 
The analytic framework helps you to decide what are the questions you're actually asking. What are the interventions? What are the exposures? What are the outcomes? What are the populations? And especially, it will help you to define the final criteria that you're going to use when you're selecting studies for your review. Thank you. In next video, we will cover search strategies.